what's up everyone welcome back to my channel i hope you guys are doing good in today's video i'm going to be showing you guys how i created this classy ombre set with some bling glitter and 3d flowers using another new color cube from model ones i reviewed one of their other color cubes in my last video it was like a really colorful one this one has more nude shades in it so if you're somebody who like really likes nude shades this would be a really nice little palette to get um so it's pretty much like the same one i reviewed last time except the colors are different so it does come with this little booklet it's an instruction manual um and this is a color cube it looks like a little vinyl record which is so cute just like the other one this set is called keep it low key i like the name of it the colors are actually on the back um it's like a little palette kind of looks like a little um, makeup palette these are cream gels so they're a lot thicker than regular gel polishes you don't have to worry about self-leveling or anything so when you open it up there's like this little um space where you can mix it with like a little design with like a little record player and everything like that and a seal and when you take it off these are all the colors i'm gonna go ahead and swatch the colors in a minute um, but this is a brush that comes with it. it actually has a detachable bottom that you can use as a cap so let's go ahead and get into the swatches. I'm just gonna speed through them. This first color is a nice white shade. I do recommend cleaning the packing off of your brush. That's why it was a little bit streaky at first. This next one is an iridescent shade with like a golden blue shift. You can use these type of shades as a topper or by themselves. Um, this next one is a light nude pink. Um, and after that, we have a metallic peach shade. Look at me describing these colors. Normally I suck at describing colors, but I'm on it today. Um, this next one is a beige color with a pink undertone. It's a very light color. Um, and then after that, we have a bronzy metallic shade. This one's really pretty. I love the choice of nudes in this palette. If you're somebody who likes nudes, this is a perfect palette for you. Um, this next one is a tan nude and the one after that is pretty much the same just a little bit darker these are very thick so you want to use thin coats to avoid them wrinkling in the lamp um, then we have a medium nude pink this is really pretty i like that one too um, and this next one is kind of like in between a tan and a brown kind of um, and then after that we have a cream shade has a little bit of a yellow undertone but it looks cream to me then we have another iridescent shade that you can use as a topper with a gold shift um, and after that we have a peachy nude this one's really pretty i love peachy nudes definitely want to use that color on a set um, after that we have a really pretty coral nude and then a berry nude shade um, after that we have a reddish brown color i'm not too crazy about that one um, and then we also have another brown tone nude here this one is pretty i really like that one and this next one is more so like a caramel color it looks just like caramel to me then we have just a brown they get darker towards the end of the palette i will be doing a second coat off camera um but after two coats they were fully pigmented like there's no streaks or anything then we have a dark red i'm not too crazy about reds but it's nice if you like it and then this last color is a glittery gold shade so like i said i applied a second coat off camera and then a top coat you want to cure each layer for 60 seconds these are all the shades they're really pretty i love them all if you guys are interested in this color cube i'll link it in my amazon store under gel polish so definitely check it out all right so let's get into this tutorial i've prepped my nails off camera as usual and i'm going in with some model ones primer this primer came with one of their other gel polish sets. I did two coats of that. I dehydrated off camera with isopropyl alcohol. So I'm gonna be doing an acrylic set, but I'm also using like gel polishes. I'm gonna be like encapsulating them. So I'm applying the white shade from the palette to the tips of these two nails um, because I'm gonna be doing an ombre with these two. So I do end up going in with two coats because as you can see, it's pretty pigmented with one, but if you go in with a second coat it brings the color out more like you don't see any streaks or anything like i said you want to do thin layers with these type of gels because they're a lot thicker 
than um, regular gel polishes so you don't want like them to wrinkle in the lamp because of the fact that you applied the layers too thick the lamp won't be able to cure through them so it's just best to do thinner layers with these but they're super easy to apply So I wanted to add some glitter to this set. I'm going to be using this glitter acrylic from Glitter Bells called Chunky Star. It's a holographic glitter acrylic with different size holographic glitters in it. I'm just applying it sparsely over the nail. I did want kind of like that glassy look so I'm just like applying it in little beads over the nail but I still wanted you to be able to see through the nail I didn't really want to build up the entire nail to where it was like solid glitter if that makes sense and I'm also going to be doing the same thing on the tip of the nail on the ring finger because I'm also going to be doing an ombre on the nail that's going to be like the base for the 3d flowers Before I do the ombre, I'm going to paint over the tips of these nails with the gold and blue iridescent shade just to give the tips of the nails like a little bit of something besides white. Um, and like I said, now I'm going to do the ombre. I'm using the nude pink shade from Valentino Beauty Pure called Lustrous Pink. This is a little bit sheer, so you do kind of have to build it up, but it's a really nice nude color for ombres. It's like in between a beige and a pink. I really like it. And it has a slight shimmer to it, so it makes it like a little bit pretty. So I usually start with the first bead at the tip in the smile line where they meet, and I blend that down into the tip. Then I go in with like a cuticle bead and blend that over the previous bead into the tip. And then I add in a couple more beads just to kind of like build up the color some i work with the acrylic wetter because i feel like you get a better ombre that way um but yeah like i said this color is sheer so you kind of have to add a couple beads to build up the color Now I'm going to go ahead and encapsulate the umbres and use the clear acrylic to kind of build up the nails a little bit since they are thin. Um, so I use the clear to build up the structure of the nail as well as encapsulate the blend so I don't file through it when I go to file shape 
and buff. I'm using Mia Secret Clear Acrylic and the monomer I am using dries a little bit fast so bear with me while I try to brush it out. My brush was a little bit gunked up at this point because of the glitter so it was kind of drying a little bit fast but yeah like I mentioned in my last couple of videos I will not be buying this monomer again. It's one that I found on eBay and it dries too fast for me. I like Mia Secret because it gives me that time to work with it so yeah as you can see it was like really drying fast so i just ended up adding a little bit near the tip to kind of like even it out and just file it um after i was done so that the shape comes out even it's a little bit annoying but whatever but anyways usually i do a three bead method um and then like add in acrylic where i need to so i usually apply my first bead to build up the free edge of the nail um, and the second bead is where the tip and the natural nail meet um, and I blend that um, down into the tip but kind of focus it in that area to start building the apex and then the third bead is a cuticle bead um, to further build the apex but when I place the bead down I kind of place it a little bit under the cuticle and work it up so it doesn't flood the cuticle area when I place it down and then like I said I just look at the nail from different angles to see if I need to add in acrylic Okay, so I'm going to start debulking the nails to shape them up a little bit. They weren't too bad after that horrible acrylic experience, um, but I'm just going over them. I usually start by the cuticle and file around the cuticle to seal it and then just kind of smooth side to side over the entire nail. On the pinky, I accidentally must have filed too much off um, at the tip because the polish started lifting up, um, but I kind of just was really careful and left it like that um, because later on when I go to apply the bling over it, it kind of fixed it. Um, I just didn't want it to come off because that would kind of ruin the look. So, so just be careful when you're filing not to file too much off the sides. I don't know why I did that. I filed a little bit too much and it kind of like broke the seal between the acrylic and the polish. But like I said, I managed to fix it when I applied the bling and everything. There's nothing like a little bling can't cover up nobody's gotta know um but yeah i'm just basically debulking the nails first and then i'm going to shape them up afterwards because i like a nice sharp shape and i feel like it comes out a lot more like crisp when you do it this way go in with the drill first and then do the shaping last um i also do kind of like 
file along the sides of the nail with my drill to pre-shape them before I go in with my hand file. You also want to make sure you file underneath your nails as well, especially with glassy nails because you don't want any product showing through when you go to top coat them later on. And now I'm gonna take my hand file and shape up the nails. For this one, I'm gonna do a long, kind of like coffin shape. I wanted these a little bit more narrow because I didn't want the shape to be too wide. I wanted like a really nice, classy, blingy set. So that's the kind of look that I was going for. So right now I'm taking the bulk off the sides. I'm just holding my file straight and filing along the sides until I'm satisfied with the overall width of the nail and then to get that like tapered coffin look at the tip, I hold my file at an angle and file in towards the tip of the nail. I'm just making sure to be really careful with the pinky because like I said, the polish started peeling up at the bottom and I really didn't want to file it off because it would look kind of weird if I like removed it because you can't really go in and reapply afterwards because you would see the difference between the polish that was encapsulated and then sitting on top of the nail so it looked kind of weird. Um, so if that ever happens, just be careful. You can always like glue it back down later on, which is what I'm going to do basically with the rhinestone gel. Um, so yeah, to file the free edge, you want to hold the file at an angle and file straight across and then always buff your nails after you're done filing to buff out the scratches and smooth out the rough edges.
And next, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some McCart rhinestone gel to apply some little AB rhinestones to my nail. I'm applying them kind of spread out over the nail because this is going to be like the middle for the flowers and you wanna leave enough room to do the flowers. So I'm just applying a little dot of the gel and applying a rhinestone into the gel. You just wanna wipe off the excess gel so it's not on the nail before you cure. So I'm gonna start doing the 3D flowers. Unfortunately, I was only able to get one of the flowers on camera because my camera actually died, so I'm sorry about that. But I do the same thing for every um, flower, basically. Um, I will link another video where I did these same kind of flowers if you wanna see how I did them more in depth. But basically, you wanna pick up a little bead. I'm using some white acrylic from a cart, and I have this little 3D nail art brush. Um, but basically you just pick up a bead, wait about 10 seconds for it to be like halfway set so that it's not running all over the nail. And you kind of want to push um, the petal in the middle and kind of drag it out when you first um, go to start sculpting the petal. And then press on the left side and the right side on the inside of the petal and it'll give you that realistic flower appearance. Um, you just want to make sure that you're not using too much monomer because it can get really, really runny. To finish up the set, I'm going to go ahead and apply the bling. As you can see, I've already applied it to the pinky because at this point I finally realized that my camera wasn't recording. My memory card actually got full and I was like in the zone doing my nails and I realized that it wasn't recording so I was kind of mad about that. But like I said, I'll link that other video on the cards where I did the 3D flowers if you want to see like how I did more flowers than just one. But you pretty much do the same thing for every flower. Um, it's really, really easy. Um, but like I said, I fixed the pinky nail where the gel polish was lifting up. I applied some McCart rhinestone gel and top coat over it and then applied some rhinestones to the tip of the nail and that kind of held down the piece of polish that was um, coming up and also covered it up with the bling so it worked out just great. When in doubt, just add bling. <laughs> That's like my new motto. Um, and I'm just going to do the same thing for the rest of the nails with the bling. I apply McCart rhinestone gel and model one's top gel and I use that combination to apply my bling um, and I am top coating under the nails with the glassy look for the bigger pieces like on the pointer finger I apply the rhinestone gel directly on the nail and apply the stones the bigger ones because it holds them better so they won't fall off I did the same thing with the bigger rhinestone on the pinky um but yeah that's pretty much it for this set let me know what you think of it in the comments if you're new don't forget to subscribe before you leave and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified when i upload a video and if you're not following me on instagram and tiktok make sure you do that so we can stay connected on there and i'll see you guys in the next video bye love you guys Mini.